Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to do a Q&A. I believe this is the second video here. This is just general questions and answers for quantitative finance. Um, I believe there might be a few just general finance questions, but let's dive on in. All right, the first question is, I'm currently doing my undergrad in finance from UIUC. Although we have an entire concentration dedicated to risk management housed in the finance major of our business school, which includes class such as financial engineering, pricing of derivatives, and trading, I'm not sure whether that'll get me a job as a quant, especially because hedge funds don't really recruit at our career fairs. Which major would you recommend getting a dual degree in in order to make it more favorable for me to get a MFE afterwards and generally prepare me for a job in quantitative finance? Um, all right, so basic advice here. One, avoid business schools like the plug if you actually want to work in quantitative finance. Hedge funds does not mean quantitative finance, so I think I'm gonna point this out. Some hedge funds are based on financial theories, uh, financial backgrounds, economic theories. Um, and then quantitative finance is based on mathematics, statistics, and relationships within finance and economics, but the real focus is math and statistics. At a business school, I would avoid taking these classes because yes, they have good names like financial engineering and pricing of derivatives. Um, you're gonna do very, very simplified, dumbed down versions. You are not going to do the math required. Why? Because you actually need a degree in mathematics before you actually do financial engineering. So there is no way you'd be able to do the math understand it and apply it at an undergraduate level. Um, what would I recommend for dual degrees? Um, well, there's a few. <laughs> Statistics, I think is probably one of the biggest and best. Um, applied mathematics is a pretty good one. Uh, computer science is good, but one of the problems with computer science is a lot of times you might not get as much rigor. So if you're gonna do a dual degree, I would either do um, math, applied mathematics and computer science, or I would do um, statistics and computer science. If you wanna do a finance degree, it's completely fine, but you need either a stats or applied math or an engineering degree to go with it um, to make it viable to get into a financial engineering program. That being said, I would get your undergrad and then come to the US. The US has the best education system in the world. We have the best and the brightest for academic rigor for financial engineering programs. Yes, there are some great programs. I know Sweden has a few good ones. I believe Germany has a few good ones. Um, and I believe the UK has a few good ones. But job-wise, academic-wise, education-wise, you have to come to the U.S. There's like 70%, I believe, of all quant finance jobs are in the U.S. Um, so if you want a good job, you want to make good money, you want to have a good standard of living, you really do need to come to the U.S. Um, next question here is, what are hot skills of the future in banking? Can you please make that prediction? Okay, so this is a tough one. Um, Number one skill is programming, programming, programming. There is no way around programming. Um, automation is coming. Don't believe all the hype. Um, you're gonna have to program in finance and banking. Yes, if you work in like the general finance area, you'll be doing like VBA and like, I don't know, SQL and all kinds of things like that, which is fine. Um, but if you work in quantitative finance, you're gonna be having to do a lot of heavy programming. Um, I do believe programming will take over as the dominant kind of language of the banking industry uh, moving forward. Other hot skills, data science is big right now. Everybody's talking about it. Uh, if you want to get into banking, there is kind of like a shoe in like a little crack, you know, in the, the foundation of how to get into banking with the data science route. I don't think it's going to like drastically change the world. Um, but I don't think there's enough skill and talent in finance that's doing it. So I think having that as a background is helpful as well. And then finally, the third probably most common and desirable skill in quantitative finance is statistics. You need statistics um, more than anything. Statistics is how you develop and build models for the banking industry. Um, if you just wanna go into banking and you wanna work on the finance side, the number one skill is people skills and a good MBA. It's really all you need. Um, if you can communicate well, if you can work with people well, and you have an MBA from a top tier, MBA will get you in. Uh, the communication skills will help kind of progress you through your career, but you don't really need all of the fancy other things. Again, programming would help, but that's just my take on what we'll be needing moving forward with finance. All right, so now next question here. How difficult is it for a foreigner get a job in wealth management or consulting in the US, let's say New York City, I'm from Mexico, and the college where I got my undergrad degree is considered prestigious in my country. Um, this is a tough one to answer. Um, my recommendation if you want to work in the US, 
come to the U.S. and get a master's degree, and then from there get a job with a master's degree into any of these fields. Getting a job in the U.S. without um, a U.S. degree, it's nearly impossible, I'm going to say. Yes, there are tons of people that do it. When I mean tons of people, it's not like hundreds of people. It's just handfuls of people here and there. Um, the reason being is that we have so much talent in the U.S. and there's so many people here. I'm not saying this is just U.S. citizens. So most financial engineering programs, for example, um, are all foreigners. China, India, Europe, um, a buddy of mine's from Mexico, for example. Um, they're all coming into these U.S. academic institutions and getting jobs. If you want to work in like wealth management or consulting, though, I wouldn't take the route of going into something quantitative. I would take the route of going to get like an MBA or like a master's in finance if you can get into a top program, um, they should easily be able to place you into like any of the top consulting firms um, or wealth management in general. So my advice would just be, it's going to be hard to get in without a U.S. degree. Come here. Uh, if you want to do consulting, wealth management, get like an MBA or a master's in finance and then go that route. All right. This next one has three um, questions here. So number one, world quant finance engineering program. Is it any good? How does it compare to other top MFE programs? So the program is free, which I do know. No one will hire you in the US. I can't imagine it. Um, most of us are spending years and years of studying. Then we go and pay $70,000, $80,000 for a master's degree from a top university, um, typically with people from the industry teaching you things that aren't in textbooks. So an online degree versus a paid degree, no one's going to hire you with the online degree. Um, you're not going to cover the rigorous material, I can tell you that. Um, you're not going to have as much like grit and grind and like character building exercises from an online degree. Um, in general, online degrees are not considered valuable, at least in the finance industry and in the quantitative finance industry. Yes, I'm sure there's like one or two people that are doing it or they're like, you know, entrepreneurs and doing their own investing. But I wave my hands at it because it's not like a real solid job making like really good money. Um, so online degrees, I would avoid all of them. Even if you have like an online degree from like a really good institution, like if Harvard or MIT had an online program, I still wouldn't take it. Do brick and mortar. Uh, most people will not hire you with an online degree. Uh, number two, what kind of resumes get shortlisted for interviews? Um, resumes that fit the job description are probably the ones that are going to get shortlisted. There's no really like method. So I know a lot of people assume like, oh, if you have like, I don't know, a top Ivy League school. So like for financial engineering, if you had like Baruch, Columbia, um, I don't know, CMU, if they're on your resume, you're going to get shortlisted. No, this, I think this works more so in the business side. So if you're in traditional finance, you went to like, you know, Wharton's business school or Harvard's business school. But even then, like it's not from the resume, it's because you know people on the MBA side that will get you the interview without having to go through all that process. But when we shortlist interviews for quant finance, uh, we're just looking at skills. So you can get to like a generic school, but you have like a PhD in something. Looks pretty good, right? PhD in stats. I'm looking for you to do model development or validation. Um, short lists are going to be based on your skill set. Writing a well-written resume with actual like skills and pointing out your specialties that fit the job will get you the interview a lot quicker. If you have a resume that has too much writing and too much nonsense, even if you have the skills, I don't know that, so I'm going to toss the resume. So um, shortlisting, just write a solid resume and put on good skills. Do not lie. I will put this in here. Um, I have seen people that lie. I have interviewed people before many years ago. Uh, I interview a lot of students, right? I see these and when I see you list something and I grill you on that and you can't answer the questions in my head, I'm like, Oh, you lied. You don't know what you're doing. And I move on. Uh, if you can talk intellectually, like I don't care if you get it right or not. I just want to see you thinking through the problem. And most people that list these skills that lie, do not get interviews and do not do well. So do not lie. I cannot emphasize that enough. Um, third question, is the GARP FRM sufficient enough to get a job as a risk manager at a top level firm? No, it's not. Um, the FRM is kind of a nice to have. The FRM covers the very touchy feely, like big picture of risk management. So you can see lots of different areas, which is good. Uh, it's great for a management perspective, right? You can see uh, like credit risk, market risk, operational risk, and PPNR, so pre-provisional net revenue risk. Um, yeah, it's it's okay to have. Is it going to get you a job? No. Uh, if you don't have a master's, is it going to help you? No. Um, I've had it for since 2015. So, so I've had it for like, I don't know, three to four years, depending on when it was issued. Has it helped me like really speed up my career? No. Um, is it good to have? 
yeah, I like it because it pushes me to keep up with the self-learning credits on their program, but no, it's not going to be enough to get you an actual job in quantitative risk management, at least not in the U.S. All right, and the next question here is your opinion on professional qualifications such as CFA, CAIA, PRM, FRM, et cetera, et cetera. Pros and cons, thanks. Um, CFA, let's just start off with that. It's a lot of times required by the investment industry because there are things there you're not necessarily going to learn in school. Um, a lot of it's accounting based and finance based. If you want to work in traditional finance, yes, it is required. Um, not politically correct speaking wise, I think it is required because MBAs don't teach you enough skills to actually do investing. So realistically, the CFA is kind of like your master's degree in that sense. Um, from quantitative finance, I don't think it adds that much value. Like, yeah, you learn a lot more traditional finance. Um, if you want to kind of well-round yourself, could be good. For CAIA, which is the Chartered Alternative Investment Analysis, um, it's a designation. So in general, I don't think designations add that much value. It just so it just shows that you're interested in your field and that you're continuing to learn. Same goes with the PRM and the FRM. I made a video on it and some people got upset because like, oh, I said the PRM wasn't as good as the FRM. To be like blunt with all of you, these designations are just designations. They're not going to get you a job. They're not going to make you any better. Um, they might help you slightly. Like if there's two candidates, they're neck and neck, um, both really good, interviewed well, maybe. But in quantitative finance, we just don't care. Like I want to see a top PhD, a top master's degree program. Um, personally, I would love to see personal research in the field, um, years of experience in a bank. I don't really care that you have a CFA, a CAIA, a PRM or an FRM. To me, they don't really add any value. Uh, most quants don't care at all. If you want to work in traditional finance, again, the CFA will help you out a lot and is a minimum requirement for many reasons. Um, having an FRM, PRM, it might be jazzy and exciting. Um, business people might like it. So yeah, it can help you on the traditional finance side. On quant finance, no, I don't think it helps out that much. So just kind of my two cents on the topic. Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time. <music>